heads of uh, government agencies and parastatals, the city of Africa, Palestine and Grace, Mr. Sarawa Obake, and the managing director of knowledge resources, Mr. Gerald Mukwe, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Our friends and colleagues at Pipestone and Great, and also Knowledge Resources, certainly deserve our commendation for providing a very timely. Providing a very time and uh, important platform for the dialogue on technology and ease of doing business. We are, without necessarily stressing the problem, that we are in a important season in history. Over 55% of the world's population have instant access to the internet already. That number is growing. The hundreds of thousands every day. The, the digital revolution and what is described as the third and fourth industrial revolution are unfolding with lightning speed before our very eyes. So every day, some seismic shift of the other end of power in business, in culture, and even in politics. On account of this revolution, which is at, and at the core of this revolution, as we've already been informed, is Communication technologies and communication technologies also are evolving, are evolving ever so quickly. The system is pivotal because not only has technology disrupted the manner of doing business, but the pace of commercial activity is also radically altered. Businesses of any size, anywhere in the world, are linked into a universal environment, exposed to competition on a nanosecond to nanosecond basis. But perhaps of greater importance, of greater moment for us at this conference in particular is how to create the new superstructure for this world, for this new world, especially in our local environment here in the period. Many of the world known business protocols are coming up to regulations, the financial space are also becoming data. Intellectual property and transnational business protocols are not only very far away. Even when they are affected, they are too soon outdated. But the legal and regulatory infrastructure for doing business already faces its own equipment. But the focus of this year's TAP conference, the of doing business, I would think to be more appropriate. Both the public and private sectors have a role to play, but the greater responsibility obviously lies with the public sector. The key in this brand new world is collaboration. And this was the rationale for the establishment of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, a forum where the public and private sector would collaborate in the objective of removing delays and restrictions that come with doing business in Nigeria and making the country a place where you can start, sustain, and grow a business. Public has formulated as a blur already. And implemented initiatives essentially relied on technology to reduce the time it takes to obtain pre investment approvals, property registrations, and effective internal and external pre processes. Okay, but is not the only adaptation mechanism we've been able to employ to reposition Nigeria as an important player in the international markets. With technology, our ministries, departments, and agencies, and federal. And now, even some state governments have been able to reduce the operational costs, reduce corruption, revitalize participation and investment in numerous sectors of the economy. The federal annual revenue service, I'm sure you hear all as well, has for instance successfully and seamlessly automated the majority of its services and processes. And this has resulted in a reduction in the time for filing operating contracts from 14 days to 72 hours. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration, NAP, has just recently been able to clear a backlog of over 5,000 outstanding NAP data applications using technology solutions. And, and, this is, and this is critical, especially for small and medium scale businesses 
uh, it helped that for so long on account of the time it takes to register at the NAPCO or NAPCO. In the energy sector, the adoption of electronic applications and approvals of new connections to the pilot has also produced a reduction in the time for new connections by about 147%. Again, the National Laboratory Registry is another example. Through the implementation of a broader, weather labeled National Laboratory Registry, the Central Bank of Nigeria has been able to aggregate over 550 financial institutions with over 30,000 financing statements value at almost 620 billion. Of course, you've heard in some detail the operations of our perhaps the biggest ongoing government technology project, the digital identification of all cities and legal residents on a harmonized platform. Nigeria will have the largest digital database in Africa, and that will be second only to ADHA, the Indian uh, model, the Indian uh, digital identification system. In particular, all around Africa. From the enhanced ability to provide accurate and analytical data for fintech companies, the content delivery services to individuals directly on the assurance of credible credentials. But perhaps more importantly, plans on human development, education, study and human health, jobs also. For a population that will be the third largest to go by 2050, a key deliverable of the digital identity project is to develop updated international standards, cybersecurity, data privacy, and confidentiality. And all of this is around policies which must prepare us for the expected challenges that will come as part of the digital economy. We fully understand that when I say we are installed the federal government and all of our private sector power, the importance of a data-driven economy and as such, the huge investment, the huge time and energy that has been directed to digitizing government data today. The Federal Electric Council recently approved the e-government master and NIPTA, in collaboration with Dallas, Dallas Department, barely two months ago, commenced the implementation of the interoperability framework that will provide shared platform, a shared platform for the use of the NDAs. So we are at the point where we are ready to go with our shared platform so that all the NDAs can speak to each other on the same platform. I have no doubt that many of the proponents of artificial intelligence will be very excited about the next data that will also become available once, uh, once we fully begin to deploy all of the resources around that digital application. I want to say, though, no, just before I, I go to uh, private sector or public sector collaboration, that perhaps the biggest way for us as public sector, and perhaps also as a nation, is the way that technology has enabled us to deploy our social investment policies. So, from hiring over 500,000 young men and women, and women under the Empower Project, the Empower Project is up. Is a, a employment program for young graduates who are out of work or have no work. And one of the things that we do is that we we'll provide each of them with a device, you know, such as you know, such, such as the iPad and mobile. Now that device has stored a lot of information and a lot of educational materials, plenty of entrepreneurship, some food writing, and several other other different disciplines. Now, what we were able to do with Empower was first to demonstrate that we could actually hire 500,000 people instead of 200,000 that have done an additional 200, all online using, uh, using our platform. And each and every one of them was actually tested all online. Each of them chose a particular type of device that they preferred and gave them a choice of devices from Samsung to some of the other names, especially the local And they chose all on. We paid them through a payment system, all of these on. We communicate with them through our open portal in various ways. And all of this is possible because of technology. 
if some of us will recall, the very tragic situation that occurred when the immigration services were trying to hire 10,000 people and you know, several stayed here in the front of the field with no men and women looking for women and the tragedy that occurred. Today, the monster that we really would need that to hire 500,000 people. And you know, I was talking a few minutes ago about the trigger money scheme where we're looking at uh, giving microcredits to 2 million uh, petty traders. That is also only possible part of the market. And we've been able to deploy very, very, very rapidly across the state, enumerate across the state, and ensure that we have data on each and every one of these individuals with photographs where they are, with GPS locations and all of them. All on account of technology. And this is the same with the additional cash transfer as well, where we're reaching, where the target is to reach a million of the poorest households in the area. We are partnering with the World Bank on this. So far, we've deployed almost 500,000. But all of this in the deepest hinterland of the area. We've been able to reach people by mobile telephone in various platforms that are not available to us. This is all on account of the environment. And there is no going back. Everything is going to be done to a large extent by how we are able to deploy technology, especially as we, we, we address concerns around human law, concerns around education, around health care. There is no way in the coming years that we will be able to build enough classrooms for the number of children that we must, that we must work with. There must be ways of deploying technology not only to train teachers but also to educate our young men and women all over the country at a pace that will match the population. And of course, as you know, the population is simply expanding in you know, frightening proportions as the years go by. So the fundamental pillar of our economic life is to lead uh, it is, it should be, is to ensure that the private sector leads. <coughs> that is so important because the business and profits are led by the private sector. And that all that government is about is to provide an environment for the private sector to lead. It. But to do so effectively, the private sector must be involved in policy formulation. We realize that only real players in the technology space for example will be used to the policy for that formulation, given the complexities of the sector. Hence the establishment of the Technology and Creativity Advisory Council. It's actually called the Advisory Group, Technology and Creativity Advisory Group. And this has relevant government agencies and industry players coming together to formulate policy on technology and creativity. And from the various meetings that we held, very obvious, that we have the right mix, we have the right mix of people. These are uh, young men and women who actually are engaged every day in some technology related business or the other. And many of them, of course, are able to come up with the kinds of policy innovation that will be able to address our concerns going forward. As you can imagine, a lot of the regular banks are changing about our filter companies. They have more detail about the role that telcos will play in financial transactions going forward. The central bank itself you know, wonders how to regulate these new tenants who are occupying the fintech space. And so our policy formulation, our policy formulation group is an important tool in helping to, to deal with some of the questions around what should be the new regulatory space for fintech companies and for some of the transactions that are going on uh, the technology space today. And this is why you know, the, that collaboration is so critical. While the public sector has been able to score points over the last two years, through the implementation of technology global solutions, the award for who are the most valuable player must go to our private industry leaders. The technology industry has been Nigeria's highest increasing employer and our most improved economic contributor. Nigerian corporations have been willing to bring data. They've been willing to drain data to lead Nigeria's technology revolution. 
The fact is that the platforms needed to power the initiatives of the public sector, and for which we take from our private sector partners, and fight with the Nigerian private sector and innovators, living in Nigeria is becoming increasingly technology based. On our smartphones, we can now search for our partners, we can perform banking transactions, we can even get small loans and buy clothes. We can invest in joint family ventures, we can monitor travel, we can book flights, we can even learn the digital language, we can even get uh, a good number of videos of some of the funniest currencies around us. It is then safe to say that technology is clearly the future for both man and business and for governments. Hence the need for both the private and public sector to continue to work collaboratively for our common providers. <laughs> let me again commend that I close Redstone and Grace and Knowledge Resources for putting together this particular forum. And I must uh, say of the uh, senior partner of Redstone and Grace, Osarwa Mokam Estia, who, as you know, uh, is uh, uh, a bulldog in this, uh, in this collaboration between the private and public sector, but for his resilience and his commitment. I doubt whether we have been able to do much to support the first time I agreed was the only law firm that won an impact award, uh, the first perfect impact awards. And for good reason. That was also for good reason. Osama and his team have offered their time to assist public sector agencies in the understanding of policy formulation and even lawmaking. I think it will show that while the business of the law firm is to render and be paid for professional services, our more enduring duty is to actively work for an enabling regulatory environment beneficial to the entire economy and not just for ourselves. As you must know, uh, the issues that are raised here are only the beginning of a rigorous process of ensuring implementation. So from here, we are literally back to the trenches and uh, working together, the digital future will yield, in my view, its enormous benefits to us all, not just those of us who are professionals or commercial people, but to most of our people who are vulnerable, who need the assistance of the government and who need the assistance of the private sector on a regular basis. Thank you all very much for your question.